Your mom is my grandma. Yep. Grandma says you're a bitter disappointment. <laughs> After two and a half men ran for 12 seasons and became the fourth highest revenue generating program a decade ago, earning $3.2 million an episode. Can you smell your mother's tears from some distant memory as she stared at her pathetic creation, asking all around her why this feeble abortion survived? Can you smell it, Chuck? After two and a half men, CBS and Warner Bros decided to end production for the rest of the eighth season after Sheen entered a drug rehabilitation program and made disparaging comments about the series creator and executive producer Chuck Lorre. Can I use your phone? <laughs> sure, I guess. Uh, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I was just trying to drown myself. After Two and a Half Men hired Ashton Kutcher to replace Charlie Sheen the following season as Walden Schmidt, a billionaire who buys Charlie's house after his death. Two and a Half Men has been off the air for almost a decade now, and believe it or not, beginning its run in 2003. The CBS sitcom enjoyed 12 seasons of consistent ratings before ending in 2015, with nearly 300 episodes, and has been labeled as one of America's most successful comedy shows. In fact, the show is credited as being the reason that The Big Bang Theory and Mike and Molly were all made. The show's success is what enabled these other Chuck Lorre shows to be made, and to be successful. Fans of the show were so passionate that after the finale of Two and a Half Men, fans launched a global petition under the name Yes to the Harpers to have Charlie Sheen reprise his role of Charlie Harper alongside his former co-star John Cryer. The series featured a pleasure-seeking jingle writer Charlie Harper, his uptight brother Alan, alongside with Alan's troublemaker son. After Alan's wife Judith decides to divorce him, he and Jake move into Charlie's beachfront Malibu house and complicate Charlie's free-willing life. In the season 9 premiere, after Charlie's death, the beach house is sold to Walden Schmidt, played by Ashton Kutcher, an internet billionaire going through the Divorce from Bridget. The attention Two and a Half Men received due to the change in characters gave the series a boost. Average total viewers during the 2011-2012 season rose 13% to 15 million. In fact, Kutcher's debut as the character Walden Schmidt in the episode titled Nice to Meet You, Walden Schmidt was seen by 28.7 million people on September 19, 2011. Ratings revealed that figure was higher than any other episode for the show's first eight seasons. Since the show's finale, the cast has gone on to do their own work, and it's pretty wild. We have the star of the show battling drug addictions, HIV, along with having allegations of sexual assault, not to mention claiming that he was a warlock from outer space, having tiger blood, and coining the term winning. We had another converting to Christianity and joining a Seventh-day Adventist church, and claiming that the show contradicted his moral values, begging fans to stop watching it, while another cast member called Donald Trump the Charlie Sheen of politics, claiming that Charlie Sheen was full of, well, you know what and another cast member who went on to be a leading man in Hollywood, but also invested money into approximately 60 different companies, including Skype, Airbnb, and Foursquare. What's going on guys, it's Clyde Smith, and today we're doing a series titled Where Are They Now? We're gonna take a look at the star-studded cast of Two and a Half Men, and what they're all up to these days. I mean, maybe you know a bit about what Charlie and Alan are up to, but what about Jake? If you want to see more Where Are They Nows, let us know down in the comments section who you wanna see us document next. Anyways, let's get into this video. To avoid any speculation, I will now allow my precious tiger blood to be extracted. There you go. Those who deserve it now possess it. Everybody saw the original video of Charlie Sheen having the tiger blood meltdown. It was so huge that two of his famous phrases, winning and tiger blood, permanently made it into the pop culture zeitgeist. Sheen also went on to perform a series of sold out one man shows at Radio City Music Hall with hordes of fans wearing tiger blood t-shirts and screaming winning from the audience. So needless to say, his next few years after Two and a Half Men were quite a blur if uh, you catch my drift. On November 17th, 2015, Sheen publicly revealed that he was H. HIV positive, having been diagnosed roughly four years earlier. Charlie claimed that he managed the condition with a triple cocktail of antiretroviral drugs and claimed that it was impossible that he could have infected any of his partners. Sheen noted that since 2011, he paid extortionists approximately $10 million to keep his HIV status secret, despite being upfront with all of his partners about having it. On January 12, 2016, while on Dr. Oz, Sheen stated, I've been off my meds for about a week now, receiving alternative treatment in Mexico from San 
Dan Chachua, who claims to have an effective vaccine for HIV, according to his manager. However, after the episode was taped, he resumed taking his medications. In addition, Charlie claimed that he always knew he was going to contract HIV after having a vivid dream about it. He also went on to claim about how his bipolar has been more manageable in the past. The following year, Charlie Sheen made headlines again after he sued the National Enquirer over a story alleging that in 1986, the then 19-year-old actor raped his 13-year-old co-star Corey Haim on the set of Lucas. The case was settled in 2018. Haim's mother, Judy, identified a different actor as her son's rapist on the Dr. Oz show and told Entertainment Tonight that Sheen never raped her son, calling the claims made up. However, in March 2020, actor Corey Feldman repeated the claim that Sheen raped Haim in his documentary, My Truth, The Rape of Two Corys, documented by Feldman's ex-wife, Susie Feldman. His publicist went on to deny the allegations, calling them sick, twisted, and outlandish. Over the next few years, it appears Charlie Sheen has cleaned up his act and sobered up. In April 2019, on Loose Women, Charlie claims that he had been one month sober and even went on to say that he does not know how he managed to get to that point. 10 years after his winning meltdown, he claims that still, to this day, people still tell him how cool and fun it was to watch. In his reply, oh yeah, great. I'm so glad that I traded in early retirement for a f***ing hashtag. Sheen recently starred in the series Anger Management on FX for two seasons, but then largely fell off the map. However, Sheen has mentioned plans to get back in front of the camera. Fun fact that after Sheen had revealed that he was HIV positive, a study confirmed that HIV awareness had spread to 2.75 million searches, including 1.25 million searches were directly related to public health outcomes because they included search terms for condoms, HIV symptoms, or HIV testing. In addition, a later study found that Sheen's disclosure corresponded with a 95% increase in over-the-counter Atome HIV testing kits. This phenomenon has been called the Charlie Sheen effect, as this provided more HIV education than most UN events do. This is Where was I? John Cryer managed to continue working after Two and a Half Men, being a regular on the critically acclaimed CBS drama NCIS, while releasing his own book, So That Happened, a comedy tale which tells the story of Cryer's 30-year career on stage, film, and television. A number of interviews with Molly Ringwald and his former wife, Lisa Joyner, who wondered if he might be gay because he never kissed her. Cryer was asked in 2014 if he was mistaken for gay. He called himself an effeminate heterosexual dork. In 2016, while on the podcast, Never Not Funny, Cryer went on to bash Donald Trump. I have been pointing out and I have been screaming to the rooftops that Donald Trump is the Charlie Sheen of politics. I have to tell you, I love Charlie Sheen. I loved working with him when he was sober, but he was full of sh and he has been full of sh He has a serious addiction. His addiction is obviously serious, drugs and all. But Trump is just addicted to feeling important. I think that if anybody is under the delusion that he cares about anybody in America besides himself, they are stoned and need to rethink their priorities because it's just ridiculous that he's gotten as far as he has. On May 21st, 2018, Cryer was featured on the premiere episode of season nine for Who Do You Think You Are? His most recent break was in 2018 when it was announced that he had been cast as Lex Luthor on the CW's Supergirl and he has a reoccurring role. I'm on to an app, man. I don't want to be on it. Please stop watching it. Please stop filling your head with filth. In a November 2012 interview with a Christian website, Angus T. Jones said that he had recently been baptized and converted to Christianity, joining a Seventh-day Adventist church. He attacked the show, calling it filth and that it contradicts his moral values, and said that he was sick of being a part of it. He also went on to beg fans to stop watching the show. This was because Jones's character Jake was given more adult storylines. He was portrayed as a heavy marijuana user, as well as being sexually active both with girls his own age and older women. Jones claimed that during the ninth season, he said that he was uncomfortable with the new storylines, saying that it was very, very awkward to do the adult thing while not an adult. Jones went on to apologize for these comments. After departing from Two and a Half Men, Jones attended University of Colorado Boulder, where he majored in Jewish studies and kept a relatively low profile. Leaving acting in 2016, Jones joined the management team of Tonight, a multimedia and event production company started by Justin Combs, the son of rapper Sean P. Diddy Combs. While reflecting on his decision to quit show business and join a religion, Jones claimed that he didn't want anything or anyone being able to trample on his right to say and do what he wanted, meaning that finding religion was a phase that he had to go through in order to sort his own life out. It is really unclear whether or not Jones will ever return to acting. I guess now is as good a time as any.
probably best known for his comedic roles as Mike Kelso on that 70s show, MTV Punked. Ashton Kutcher went on to marry his TV show sweetheart, Mila Kunis, and have two children together. His most recent notable roles were as Cole Bennett on The Ranch and Steve Jobs in the blockbuster disaster Jobs. Ashton has stayed relatively quiet in entertainment the last couple years. He apparently focused a little more on stacking some bank. The actor invested money into approximately 60 different companies, some of which include Skype, Airbnb, and Foursquare. All right, so I think I'll bring this where they now to an end right here. After checking out the cast members of Two and a Half Men, what did you guys think? If you'd like to see more of this series, please be sure to let us know who's next, and I'll see you guys in another video.